So now we pretty much have the finished goods in the United States model. So we want to add a couple of things here. The first one is going to be, we'll just have uh, model parameters here. Because we're going to build, we're going to build to this list over time. So we need the inventory value for each of these finished goods in the U.S. market. So what we're going to say is um, U.S. five make ten count standard cost. US dollars. Okay, and again, we'll, we'll make up some numbers. So we'll say, you know, the, the, the 10 count is 20, and we'll say the 50 count is well, that seems a little high. Let's say 10 and let's say it's 50. Let's say it's 45. We'll say it's a little cheaper. And we'll change. Okay. All right, so in order to calculate the inventory value, this becomes very easy. Uh, we already know what our ending inventory levels are going to be based on what we've just developed. So you just take the inventory level and multiply that by the standard cost. Let's fix that cell and we'll do the same for the other one. Change both of these cells to the accounting type. All right, so now you can see the inventory value of both of these finished goods in all monthly buckets at this particular distribution center. All right, so that's pretty much it. We've got some aggregation fields here that we want to work on. So let's start by just counting up the total number of tablets and you'll see uh, you know, down the road how you may use this, but also it'll allow you to draw some, some insight. So this is very easy to do. So to figure out the total number of tablets and any given month that you need to receive. Now again, you won't actually be receiving the tablets. You'll be receiving the finished goods. But if you wanted to convert that into a common unit of measure, so you could gain some insights into exactly, you know, how many tablets you're selling on a global basis in any given month, you can do this type of aggregation. So this is nothing more than this field times the number of tablets in that particular finished good, and this field times that. And we'll lock down each of these cells. And there you can see Drag that across. And let's start to bolt out our aggregation columns, so our aggregation rows. I know all this formatting may be a little bit dry to, to watch, but it does help keep things organized uh, and it makes it easier to digest the information if you keep the formatting rather clean. So this is just kind of how I like to do it. You can develop your own style, but, but this works for me. So we can copy this information. Okay, 
you can see by copying that, it does nothing more than reference each of these cells, multiply it by the total number of tablets for each finished good, and give you the total. And now we'll copy this over here so we have a, an aggregate number for our starting inventory level. All right, so this is probably a good point to save. Now in terms of inventory coverage, where this uh, works for aggregation is now we can just use that PO periods of cover macro that I wrote. Our starting inventory is this aggregation field. And our aggregated demand is this row. And let's make sure I get a year. And again, we'll, we'll get rid of a bunch of these decimal places and just use one. Okay. So now you can see, even though we have, you know, two different finished goods with two different inventory levels in, aggre in aggregate, we have about 3.8 months of cover. Now that's kind of meaningless when it comes to, um, customer service levels, because obviously you supply customer demand at the finished good level, not some aggregation category, but nonetheless, you can get a feel for what your, your aggregate inventory level is for this particular uh, distribution center. And then inventory value, the aggregate aggregation, you just sum the two up. Okay, another good place to save. So the next thing we want to do is we're going to convert all of this into kilograms of API or grams of API, whatever this is going to work out uh, best at. So I got to add some, and you'll see down the road how these aggregation fields for, for this, this one help out. But for starters, we want to put in um, how many, let's say, uh, let's just change this to Let's change our unit of measure to grams. Let's see how this is gonna work out. Okay, and our next parameter is going to be uh, grams of API So we're going to use this. Okay, now we need to start worrying about operation yields and success rates. So if we're going to take a finished good that has already been through all the manufacturing steps and put that into a common unit of measure of grams of active ingredient, we've got to factor in all of the lost material along the way that actually occurred when we produced this finished good. So here's what we're going to pack. We're going to add in a lot of those yields and success rates. So packaging success rate at the beginning, we said was 100%. Packaging yield was 100%. Bulk manufacturing success rate, we said was 98%. We said was 97%. <clears throat> Okay. So in order to convert this total number of tablets into how many grams of active ingredient, all you're gonna do is say total number of tablets multiplied by the grams that are in each tablet. And then that is gonna be divided by all of our operation success rates and yields to essentially back or factor in all of that material that's lost along the way to convert, to create that finished good. Okay, so that's the total number of grams of API that that works out to. And that's frankly a, a really small number 
uh, if this was to be in the in the real world. <clears throat> and something happened there, so I obviously forgot to lock down this cell. All right, we'll copy that, bring it down. And then obviously um, the aggregation at the API or the, uh, the, the bulk tablet, it's the same. So this is kind of a redundant row, but I, I put it in, so we'll, we'll just leave it there for now. But this is maybe something if I went back for a second version, I would probably delete this row. And as a matter of fact, let's, well, let's leave it. There's no harm. Okay, so that took a good bit of time, but now we have the two SKUs modeled at the United States Distribution Center. We've got the inventory value, we've got the inventory coverage, we've got some aggregation fields that'll help us out down the road.